Okay, so with uh, these discussions we had uh, last time and uh, giving you now also the dimensions of uh, this square cylinder here, where we see that uh, we have a ratio uh, of d over h, which is of h over d clearly, so the height over the diameter, which is just the length of the square cylinder and cross section of 6. Okay, furthermore, what is of really great interest uh, was for us, what is the impact when we change the geometry of the cylinder? Yeah, what is the impact, how uh, the shading frequency is changing, and especially uh, do we have an increase or a decrease in the sound pressure level? How does the individual spectra look like in this case? Okay, so uh, what we have here, this was our standard cylinder, what we also can see here in uh, our uh, sound pressure uh, spectrum, we see here this one in black. Then there was the idea to attach in front of the square cylinder this uh, triangular uh, structure or to put it in downstream direction. And then clearly uh, also, especially towards the flow resistance, that should be a good configuration, especially these two, yeah, to reduce the flow resistance. So we detach a half ellipse uh, in front of the square cylinder, or what happens when we put it uh, in downstream direction and attach it to the square cylinder. Now let's have a look, as you can see here, the highest sound pressure level we get exactly for this year. So you see here the spectrum in uh, uh, in red. You see that we decrease the shedding frequency. And um, what we also nicely see that we have here really the strongest value uh, of the radiated sound at the shading frequency. Now the next one, so we, we can also put here uh, the, the number, so you see this is number one. Then the next one is number two, where we attached here this triangular structure downstream. Yeah? So this is number two. We see that we also have a decrease in the shading frequency compared to our standard square cylinder, and we have an increase in the amplitude. Yeah, so number three is our standard configuration, and now we see uh, we get here a nice reduction in uh, the sound pressure level and the increase in the shading frequency when we detached here in front of the square cylinder, this triangular structure. So this is number four. And number five we see uh, is when we put the ellipse in front, we have almost the same amplitude as we have with uh, the triangular structure in front of the square cylinder, so upstream. However, we have a strong increase here in the frequency. Now, do you have at least the idea why the frequency is increasing or decreasing according to the different geometries? Is there any idea? So what, how could we investigate this? Maybe for um, lower wavelengths, uh, uh, for, for higher wavelengths, so lower frequencies, the object appears um, Yeah, but, but why do you get a, a difference in the wavelengths? It, it's clear, we, we have the yeah. shading frequencies, also the frequency we hear, but why is the frequency decreasing or increasing?
what, what, what is our main, let's say, dimensionless number in order to get this frequency? So in the first uh, chapter, we discussed about the basics of uh, fluid dynamics and there we already introduced these dimensionless numbers and there is the Struhl number. I think I have written it just with the R. Struhl number, which we know that uh, in this sense, the Struhl number computes frequency characteristic length scale over velocity. Yeah? And the Struhl number is almost constant yeah, for our cases. And so we see we have the same velocity, but we will have clearly different characteristic length scales. Yeah? Especially if we look here, in this sense, yeah, we have the largest one, let's say, but it's a question what length scale we do. But it, as you see here, it is a larger length scale, which gets a little bit confusing then on this side, when you look the attachment we have here, because here we get the highest frequency. So the characteristic length scale has to be reduced compared to that of a square cylinder. That also shows us that we not only can directly look to the structure uh, we have here, um, in our case, we also have to know a little bit how the flow look like. Yeah? So, uh, and that will strongly give this impact especially on the sound pressure level, but also on the change of the frequency. Here, uh, when you look, especially on this structure here, then you will have a flow which already will separate very early on the side lengths we have here. Yeah? And so the characteristic geometric dimension you have to take will be smaller, but you see, just looking at the geometry, it's not possible to get this characteristic length scale. So you also have to know about the flow. Okay, let's have this in a, uh, in this case here. We already ordered it, uh, as you can see, from the lowest sound pressure level generated at the shading frequency to the highest one. And uh, it is also interesting, perhaps, to look at the drag coefficient, which gives you the idea about uh, if you increase or decrease the flow resistance. And you see it is also not in this sense consistent. So it increases up here to our standard uh, square cylinder, and then it even decreases. Yeah? Uh, and still what we see, we have an increase in the sound pressure level. So we cannot just look at the drag coefficient. Another possibility is to look at the turbulent kinetic energy. And here you see, well, the smallest in, in, in a cross section clearly, uh, what we have here. So we see that it is the smallest one with this geometry. So we see, on the other hand, if we look at the square cylinder, okay, it strongly increases. But if we look at the last case, yeah, where we, we attach this half ellipse in downstream direction, you see it still now decreases. Yeah, it is a little bit higher if you look at the values compared to this structure here. So also the turbulent kinetic energy will not really help us in this sense because, well, the higher the turbulent kinetic energy uh, from the, the feeling here, physical feeling, should 
be a case where strongly increasing uh, the sound, the radiating uh, sound. However, as we see, uh, it is not the case. So we uh, really increase here the radiated sound pressure, although we decrease the turbulent kinetic energy from our standard configuration to this configuration. And um, another possibility to look for is how homogeneous our uh, turbulence is. And that you do as follows. You look at the root mean squares uh, velocities here, a averaging just behind the cylinder. And that is the x, y, and z component. Yeah? In Dynamics, you always name them U, V, and W. U is downstream, so that we just, so this is downstream component. Yeah, and, and uh, if we have a look here, okay, for our standard square cylinder, well, we see they are almost the same but the W component is quite different. On the other hand, if we look at this half ellipse attached to the cylinder in downstream direction, these two are almost the same, but we have here then the deviation. And uh, as we can see here, the most homogeneous distribution we have here. Although there is also, as you see here, a difference of dot two meters per second between the U and V component and the uh, W component in this sense. And, and here again, what we see is the average kinetic energy, uh, which we have here. And um, you see again, uh, just very importantly, that we really uh, have uh, decreased it here compared to this, uh, decreased it here, with this structure, although the sound pressure level increased. Yeah, and then we did a very interesting experiments uh, in this sense that what we did is we attached uh, here such a disc on the top of the cylinder. Because what we could see in a smoke visualization, and that we already at this time also found out in the numerical simulation that we have a strong vortex, roof vortex. Yeah, it is clear uh, in this sense uh, that we have strong vortices on both sides. Yeah, and this generates the form common street downstream. Yeah, but since the cylinder is finite, we will also have here a strong vortex, so a detachment of the flow on the roof, and these vortices interact with the vortices of the von Kármán streets being generated at the two sides yeah, of the cylinder. And now you see here, so we call this the roof vortex, and now you see here the spectra, again just with the base plate, then uh, with the cylinder, it is the red one, and then with this uh, disc here on the top of the roof, nicely seen here, and you see what we get is a strong, a, a little bit increase in the shading frequency, but a strong increase in the amplitude at this shading frequency. Yeah? And this then give us uh, the, the very nice hint, what we could also nicely see in the visualization of the numerical results, that this roof vortex interacts with the vortex strip. And if you have such a, a plate on the top of the cylinder shown here, then this interaction between 
the roof vortex and the vortices along the von Kármán street is suppressed. Yeah? And it seems that these vortices, if they can interact with the vortices in downstream direction, that they reduce the overall uh, vortices, strength of the vortices, and therefore reduce the sound pressure level. And it is clear if you have this cylinder with the half ellipse, if we go back, and you now look to this part here yeah, from the top, then it will happen that when you have here the detachment of the flow, that you already have a reattachment here somewhere in the region of the half ellipse. And therefore, this is downstream direction, there will be less interaction uh, with the vortices coming from the side walls of the cylinder. Yeah? And, and that nicely uh, shows us this part that we have here really the highest sound pressure level. That is our standard cylinder. And that was the configuration with the wedge in front, so in upstream direction, where we had the lowest sound pressure level. Okay, so uh, this nicely demonstrates the following things, which we will also summarize later on. It nicely demonstrates that, first of all, for such a case where is looking at the spectrum, we generate tonal sound, at least for such cases, the kinetic energy is not the best choice to get and uh, illustrate what will happen when this kinetic energy increases. As we have seen, the kinetic energy increases, but the, on the other hand, the generated sound decreases, or vice versa in this sense. Further on, we see that it's not so easy uh, to interpret it uh, or to get the characteristic length scale because it is the characteristic length scale uh, we need for our flow. And just taking here a characteristic length scale of the geometry of the cylinder perhaps doesn't give you the correct shading frequency as shown here. So we really need the full, let's say, uh, idea how the flow structures look like in order to get a reliable uh, answer to all these questions and understand how different geometries change the generated sound. Okay, so a second. So this was more or less, as you have seen, well, we had some uh, measurements with hot wire devices to get the flow velocity, and we just had the uh, microphone signals with which we did, uh, in this sense, uh, compute the spectra. The microphone signals in some distance where there is no flow. A second very important possibility clearly is to measure the wall pressure sensor as shown in this sketch here. What we really did is to put here uh, seven wall pressure sensors along this side. Very important there is that they are flash mounted. So when the flow comes here, uh, that it will not be disturbed by the sensor itself. Okay, so you see the, the length here, 120 millimeter, was already discussed, the side length of the cylinder, 20 millimeters, and you see here that in distances of 15 millimeters, we have mounted uh, the wall pressure sensors. And what is clearly of uh, great interest, for example, is to have such a plot as shown here. So it is the case of the 30 meters per second inflow where we have a turbulent flow. And um, what we have here is the wall pressure. 
in db and here it is just the height of the cylinder it is normalized in this sense uh, so one would correspond here really the position here if this is 0 120 millimeters and you see here the different cases so it is the triangular uh, structure in front of the cylinder so upstream the unmodified case in blue and in red as we have seen this half ellipse in downstream direction which had the largest impact especially towards uh, the amplitude of the radiated sound and when we look here in this in this case then we see that the wall pressure sensors or the signals itself yeah the amplitudes are almost the same over the whole height for this case of uh, the triangle attached in front of the cylinder so in upstream direction and we are all most about 115 dB wall pressure. Uh, you see here in blue the unmodified we already have here a stronger deviation between the sound pressure measured at the top at the bottom let's say of the cylinder and the strongest deviation and the highest amplitudes we see here for this uh, half ellipse attached in downstream direction so this clearly shows us now that the highest volt pressure sensors uh, volt pressure amplitudes we have for the case let's go back to see it nicely here for for this case and that also results if we go back here yeah here we have all our configuration this results in the highest sound pressure level this is the sound pressure level measured by the microphone at some distance where there is no flow uh, in this sense okay now a question do you have a idea when we know about this distribution of these wall pressures along the height so of our obstacle do we have some idea why we also get here the highest radiated sound pressure which air acoustic model we could use So we have discussed light hill, we had curl, we had the vortex sound theory up to perturbation equations. So which air acoustic model you would use? So we actually have the cylinder in cross flow so the cylinder is more or less the obstacle and we know somehow the pressure distribution on the surface of the cylinder any idea just switch on your microphone or you can also put something in the chat Too early in the morning or what's going on so so clearly uh, the idea of of um, the extension of light hills integral by curl makes sense because uh, uh, we know that the pressure there on the surface 
the pressure fluctuation on the surface is the main important quantity and so if you use this then you get and you know the pressure as we know it here from some measurements it's clear that we get the highest radiated sound what is also of great interest perhaps is a correlation of the pressure signals along uh, as we see here along the height yeah so we have here the parameter uh, where is more or less the position and this is the total height which is 120 millimeters per second so you see here this case again with the triangle attached in upstream direction it is here the green one we have in blue the unmodified our standard square cylinder and the square cylinder with the half ellipse in downstream direction and here you also see you have the highest correlation mm, along the wall as you can see here so they are highly correlated these pressure signals and that also show gives us the idea that this high coherence will lead then to uh, high amplitudes in the radiated sound as we can see here for the red line one which is the case which gives us the highest radiated sound amplitudes which is the square cylinder attached with the half ellipse in downstream direction okay so this now should somehow summarize if we have uh, such an obstacle as a cylinder in cross flow or similar we get strongly tonal noise uh, i go perhaps back to one of the spectres here uh, where it is as it where we have yeah here we have uh, we could nicely get and resolve uh, the, the radiated sound at the shading frequency at um, double the shading frequency we were not so really good in resolving it anyway uh, we see here uh, a tonal sound generation due to an obstacle in a cross flow and the important point here is that the reduction of the flow resistance does not automatically result in the reduction of the generated sound yeah and that we could nicely demonstrate it with this end plate putting on the top of the cylinder and uh, where um, in such cases or the different geometries where we could decrease the turbulent kinetic energy or the track coefficient but still increased the radiated sound so the turbulent kinetic energy um, in this case is not enough to, to get the idea if uh, we increase or decrease with a different geometry the radiated sound we have here due to the finite height of the cylinder a roof vortex which strongly interacts with the vortex street and suppressing this interaction strongly increases the radiated sound this is important point as we discussed uh, just now here that uh, the large uh, the, the wall pressure fluctuations if they are large and they have a high coherence then they will result also in high sound pressure levels and uh, concerning the distribution of the flow velocity components uh, well homogeneous distribution of all three components results in lower sound pressure level uh, but this can be used in the sense if you have this information but it is not as uh, distinct as we have here this part yeah, when we know about when we know about the pressure distribution on the surface of our obstacle this is something which is clearly difficult to really get for this you already know some experiments with smoke visualization or lda or whatever um, 
measurement devices or simulations to really see here in this case how the flow structures look like and this is also uh, important uh, this part here the turbulent kinetic energy is a quantity you can use but you have to be very carefully and it uh, shows up for also a lot of other different uh, uh, practical applications that especially for the tonal sound generation mechanism the kinetic energy is not the quantity one should look at okay do you have any questions or comments so far Okay, so let's go on then to our second case. And this is uh, the case we have for the forward facing step. So as shown in this sketch here, uh, here is the inflow and then we have here this step and this is downstream direction. Uh, importantly here it is even written, the height of the step is 12 millimeters. And uh, as you know, in our experiments, we just had two base plates with which we could then nicely uh, get here geometrically this step of 12 millimeter height. Well, what can we see here? This is just a sketch. What we see here is that the boundary layer separates in front of the step as shown here and generates here a large vortex yeah in addition we have here at the edge itself we have here a detaching of the flow and the reattachment at some distance from the step in downstream direction and Clearly, we will have here along a strong shear layer. And um, when you look here, uh, for this we are very proud of, we did some smoke visualization, we, you really get this large vortex structure uh, also visualized here nicely in front of the step. If we again do hot wire, measurements and look at the uh, AC part, so the deviation, the fluctuating part, and here again the component of the velocity in downstream direction, we see here nicely that we have the highest amplitudes here, inflow velocity was 30 meters per second, and it, that here as shown gives us clearly a strong shear layer wing. Yeah, and uh, if we take out here at this part, some were uh, the measured velocity signal of the component in downstream direction and do a Fourier transform, then you get the spectrum and you see now we have a broadband spectrum in this sense. And uh, uh, we don't see here really tonal components so that uh, we have at any distinct frequency a strong increase in the amplitude. Yeah, what is nice if you now do a measurement with your microphones at some distance out of the flow, then you see uh, again that in these microphone signals measuring the sound pressure that we get a broadband sound radiated here. You see here in this diagram, the two cases, ones with the 10 meters per second. In black, it's just the blade without the step and then in green with the step. And we nicely see here that in this region, which is about 
three to four hundred hertz up almost to ten kilohertz, we get this increase in the radiated sound pressure compared to having just a bass play. So this has to come from the step. And we have here now the case for the 30 meters per second in blue, just the bass plate. And when we add uh, the second plate to get the step, we also get here a nice increase in the radiated sound pressure according to the step. Interesting is also the characteristic of the radiation. So we see here in this case the normalized intensity, acoustic intensity, and you see here uh, indicated the step. So we are here upstream, we are downstream, and you see directly at the step we have here the lowest value and then we have here the increase both in downstream as well as in upstream direction. And once it is here computed uh, for a octave band at one kilohertz and once for a octave band at two kilohertz. Okay, so we see we get here a dipole radiation, but in this case it is not orthogonal to uh, our uh, obstacle, this forward facing step. It is in flow direction. Yeah? Please remember. Uh, that the radiated sound we obtain for the cylinder and cross section is orthogonal, yeah? orthogonal, this dipole structure, orthogonal to the flow velocity. Yeah, if we look here now and investigate here in the pressure fluctuations, you see here um, a sketch. So you see we attach quite a lot of surface pressure sensors, again, flash mountain. You see here in lateral direction as well as in flow direction. And if we look here to uh, the wall pressure in dB, so normalized to 20 micropascal, then we see this is in front of the step and this is now in downstream direction after the step and you see that the highest value we get exactly at the reattachment point yeah as nicely perhaps also in this sketch here is somewhere the reattachment point here we you have the detachment of the flow and after some distance it's the reattachment and it's clear that at this point, there should be the highest uh, wall pressure. Now, uh, if we look here to some correlation, how good are the correlation between the sensor signals of our sound pressures, then we want to look here in this sense in front of the step and once backward. And as you can see here, over our frequency range, although this is not going really up, this correlation between dot two and dot six or seven to full 10 kilohertz, but we have here more or less a good uh, coherence of the signals, which is not the case if you look here then after the step in downstream direction. So we can summarize, we have more or less a good correlation, although it's not really a high correlation, but a good correlation in front. But uh, you see here with the different colors are the signals in lateral direction. You see that this, this delta y, uh, normalized to the height uh, for the different sensor positions. Okay, now what about the correlation between the wall pressure 
which is dominated clearly by the by the aerodynamic pressure and the sound pressure being measured by a microphone yeah so we you see here our three cases a a wall pressure sensor in front of the step a wall pressure sensor just after the step and the wall pressure sensor here really downstream and uh, if you look here at the first part it's the position a so we are here for this wall pressure sensor then we see here how important it is to correct the the retarded time let's say yeah because uh, as we know uh, here the sensor directly measures the signal but when sound is generated it takes some time until it hits the microphone and you see that the correlation would be more or less here the coherence more or less zero and if you look here for the corrected microphone signal and then compute the coherence that we see it here uh, and compared to the other two positions the highest coherence yeah and you always see without the correction you don't get any difference uh, um, let's say to the base part which is already more or less zero so the coherence as you see is not high it is the highest one at least compared to the positions for the volt pressure sensor in front of the step uh, doing the correlation with the microphone signal the corrected microphone signal concerning the running time which means that we will have in uh, for, from the flow structure in front of the step a strong contribution somehow to the generated sound now the question is can we perhaps reduce the radiated sound by destroying the vortex in front of the step yeah? uh, that we tried and what we actually did uh, was as i will put here we will put here some separation steel sheets in here so uh, that when the flow is coming in we, we, we separate it here this this really large uh, vortex structure in front however as we can see here for the two cases the 10 meters per second uh, lamina and 10 meters per second one moment here 10 meters per second turbulent so in this sense we we had a additional grid in front of the step to get from lamina to a turbulent boundary layer that well the reduction is not really given strong yeah so uh, you see here always let's look here at the blue curve that is the plate uh, turbulent and the plate lamina almost no difference so the influence of the boundary layer seems to be very small you see a little bit difference uh, when you look here when we have the step here uh, there is some deviation between lamina and turbulent but not a strong increase uh, in this uh, or let's say decrease we could uh, achieve by just turning the boundary layer from lamina to turbulent okay so this effect of destroying this strong uh, vortex in front or with uh, a grid to change the boundary layer from lamina to turbulent has no strong effect but the strongest effect clearly will have the geometry of the step itself so in order so a, especially the curvature and that we also did investigate with uh, our microphone array you see here the nozzle where the flow is coming out here <coughs> here you see the step so it's the base plate and here the additional 
plate on it in order to get the step. Yeah, and if you look now at the uh, source maps we have obtained, you clearly see here for the case where we have our standard configuration, the head here is 12 millimeters. You, you see that we have the strongest localization exactly at the step. Now, if we round our step by a radius which is half the height, you already see that we have here a, a we also have here nicely displayed and uh, identified sources which are due to the flow coming out here. So the step itself is now not the main contribution to the radiated sound and you even see nicely also here some sound sources uh, at the end of the plate where we also will have the detachment of the flow. Please also have a look to the amplitudes here. The maximum amplitude is 70 uh, dB that is somehow normalized this uh, source strength here which has come up to 55 and if you have the same scaling and now you have a radius of the rounding which is exactly the head then almost this part at the step vanishes the source in the source map and the strongest we have now around the nozzle okay so that shows us that already a small rounding of the sharp edge of the step gives a nice reduction in the generated sound. And that will also result in a strong reduction of the velocity gradients. And as we know, when we look at the source uh, in the partial differential equation of light, the inhomogeneous wave equation, uh, there we also have the gradients clearly uh, of the velocities. Okay, so we see for such problems, let's say you have to tackle in practice, uh, the best and most effective way is uh, to get rid of sharp edges. And that is also nicely uh, visualized here, also by experiments, by smoke visualization, you see here our standard configuration with the strong vortex structure in front of the step. You see that this is quite getting small here when we have here half rounded edge and when we fully round the edge, so the radius is exactly the height of the step as shown here, then it more or less totally vanish you not really can resolve, at least with the smoke visualization here, uh, this vortex structure. There will be clearly still a small vortex structure, but you strongly reduce it. Uh, what you also perhaps see in this visualization that you get uh, a, sm a, a strong homogenization of the flow, meaning the gradients of the flow velocities will reduce. And that we now see nicely in the source strengths here visualized over the position. So as you can see, we go here along this line uh, of our result with this source localization uh, using all the microphone signals recorded here, as you can see here by uh, our microphone array and then applying a so-called beamforming algorithm to get the source map. And uh, now having here this nice diagram, the source strength um, over the position. Then we have our different cases. And so in black is our plate, uh, as we can see here, so that is just without any step. So this is this black part, what we have here. And it is nicely, it is largest at the po uh, position 
at the end of the nozzle, so where the flow is coming out, and here at the end of the plate. So this is this position and this position. Now, what you can see here, if you have now the step and uh, without any uh, rounding, then it's here, this red line. And clearly you see the largest value you get exactly at the step. And you have really here the deviation towards the nozzle as well as here towards the end of the plate. Now, if you now have a rounding with a radius of half the height, you see here the green one, and already compared to the red one, this really strong reduction in the source strength. And if you do the rounding with a radius equal to the height of the step, you see the blue curve here, here in this region, at the step you see also here this strong deviation, there will be clearly no deviation, uh, at the nozzle position and at the position end of the plate. A, a second idea we investigated was to just change the step a little bit as shown here. So um, just a small cylinder was put here on top and uh, we did this investigation and you see um, here some effect. So uh, this cylinder uh, at the top here in this brown one directly here uh, at the step or a little bit downstream it is this bluish one we can also reduce here the source strength directly at the step but not as pronounced if you compare let's say here to the green one where we really round our step by half of the head, that's the green one, and even more effective, the blue one, where the radius is exactly the head of the step. So here we clearly have the effect that the reduction of the flow resistance, which you clearly get by this rounding has the strongest effect and already a uh, small rounding, reducing the sharp edge of the step, reduces the radiated sound. You know that there is, according to Powell, you also find it in our script, this, especially uh, this formula for the uh, strengths, the power of the sources, which is given here by the vortex cross velocity and dot product with the gradient of the fluctuating potential. So we can combine that the reduction of the flow gradients is more important than a reduction of correlation in lateral direction as uh, we have tried here we, we, because due to the strong vertical structure in front Oh, sorry, where, where it was to show, yeah, here, or if no, here it is this strong vertical structure in front, which we were trying to destroy at least to some extent by this uh, separation steel sheets, as indicated here, has a really minor effect. So that will not bring much of it. And also forcing uh, the lamina boundary layer to a turbulent one by a grid has a small effect on the radiated side. So a small reduction, but which can, which is negligible. And so here for this special case, the main uh, mechanism in order to reduce the radiated sound is clearly by getting rid of the sharp edge in order and, and, and round the sharp edge. Okay, are there any questions or comments now towards this investigation of 
our forward facing step. So you see that clearly if you have attained uh, such a device like a microphone array, uh, that this is also a, a very nice possibility at least to get the locations of the sound sources. And I think this uh, really nicely demonstrates when we go here back also this how the sources changes and and you also see the effects you have due to your experiments yeah clearly if if you look here at, the, at this case yeah then okay you see that your nozzle doesn't contribute really because actually you want to have no generated sound from your experiment when you do not have your obstacles in the flow yeah? but anyway you see that uh, with this case almost what we are investigating and that's the forward facing step vanishes and the main source parts are uh, at positions which is coming from your setup um, where the investigated uh, obstacle is not present yeah? so you always have to be careful with all the setups and also carefully clearly characterize the setup before you then attach the the object you are interested in and how this affects the generated sound Okay, are there any questions, comments? Okay, if this is not the case, then perhaps in between, just to give you information, because now uh, we have finished our last chapter. Next uh, time, we will discuss. Uh, your task, uh, your homework towards the uh, error acoustic models, and in addition, we will uh, also have one or two presentations of research projects towards error acoustics at our institute, and uh, then. The, this will be the 2nd of December, the 9th of December, there will be uh, just presentations of research topics so that you also dig into uh, what are the challenges, what is really uh, has to be investigated. This will be always research projects, fundamental, but also, as you will see, incorporating industry. And then we will have a final meeting at the 16th of December, where we will then discuss your homework towards the experimental part, what we just discussed. And there it would be also possible to do the final exam. You know, the final exam will be an individual discussion with you just about the homework uh, you did. And um, then you have obtained all possible points you can obtain and we will also fix at this date then uh, the dates of the exams for those who are not interesting to do the, the exam at the 13th of december yeah so we will as you know we also have would have standard meetings in january which um, we will not really need because uh, we also have to incorporate the time clearly you spent on the homework so that is perfectly that we now have finished our uh, lecture topics okay are there any questions towards the exam or the dates um do we need to register for any um, uh, exam? Yeah. In this sense, it, it is enough if you send me an email in advance. Okay. 
so that I, I know it and then I will also um, when we fix in the last meeting this year we will fix when we do the exams for these exams I will make officially uh, and put it into our system but it's not a problem so I will also inform you per email okay and if we um, want to do the exam on the uh, 16th yeah then we would just uh, stay in the meeting just, and yes yes exactly exactly okay exactly. perfect thank you